Hello, thank you very much for tuning into our new series of head-to-head -head discussions on issues relating to accountants' professional indemnity claims. Uh, my name is David Gooding, I'm a partner at Mills and Reeve, and I head up our accountants and national disputes team. Now today I'm really pleased to be joined by an old friend of mine, Neil Williams, who's a claims director at Howden Insurance Brokers. Now Neil's got a vast amount of experience handling uh, accountants' claims, both for firms as a broker, but also for the insurance market as a, as a claims manager at a, an international insurer. And I'm really looking forward to hearing your views today, Neil, on the state of the accountants market. It's good to speak to you. How are you? I'm very well, thanks, David. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. I'm very well. So you're responsible for the PI cover of a whole range of firms across the market. Uh, so from high street practices to some really large top 20 firms. And I suspect you must be as well placed as anyone to comment on the state of the market uh, and especially the types of notifications you've been seeing during the pandemic. Perhaps, first of all, you could give our listeners an overview of the market for accountants um, for the last 12 months. Is it as hard as people are saying? Is it the same for small as well as larger firms? And what about capacity? Yeah, thanks, David. Um, as you know, market conditions are, are very tough at the moment. Um, a few years ago, Lloyds of London carried out a, a thematic review and discovered as part of that process that outside of the United States, um, PI, professional indemnity, was the second worst performing class. And ultimately, that led to a contraction in the insurance market. Um, and obviously, since then, that's been exacerbated by the pandemic and um, economic uncertainty. As a result, insurers have generally taken a tougher stance on policy issues. They've increased rates, they've increased excesses, etc. And certainly for the larger firms, it's been more difficult because excess layer insurance has gone up significantly in terms of its price and the cost to, to an insured. So that's worth bearing in mind. What about the next 12 months then, Neil? So that's that's the sort of state of the market at the moment. Do you think it's going to be more of the same or do you think pre those, those sort of hard premiums, are they going to stabilise? Um, it's obviously very difficult to, uh, to, to tell, um, you know, it so much depends on the economic climate, but all things being equal, I'd expect rates to stay pretty much the, at the same level mm. or possibly go up slightly. Um, the good news for accountants is that um, in terms of insurers, the market is fairly stable. There's a good base of insurers there that are staying in the market. I'm not particularly expecting any new entrants in the market, but we'll watch this space and see what happens. OK, thank you. And what about notifications? So you'll see matters probably a little, a little while before they hit my desk as a panel lawyer. What's new, if anything, as a result of the pandemic and to what extent are claims COVID induced? Do you think people that have been at home for the last 18 months have been making more mistakes? Yeah, I'm not actually seeing any new trends at the moment. Um, we've seen the odd furlough related claim where mistakes been made in relation to putting in a furlough claim, but those have tended to be fairly low value in the region of 30 to 40,000 pounds. Um, I would say that in the future, I would expect there to be quite a few notifications arising out of things like supervision, so inability to supervise staff effectively. Um, and I think they'll start to come out of the woodwork in the next 12 to 24 months. Um, in terms of specific areas, uh, I think underwriters are going to be particularly concerned about audit. Uh, as you know, they've always been concerned about audit, but, you know, during the pandemic, the accountants haven't been able to get out and, and you know, look at people's books, etc. So I think that's going to be a real cause for concern. And the other area where I am seeing a greater risk is in relation to cyber. Mm. Uh, it's anecdotal to some extent, but I've certainly seen a number of ransomware claims recently, which can be very difficult to deal with and difficult to manage. And how much, I mean, you've touched on cyber there, which is quite interesting, and it's, um, it, it is a hot question at the moment. How much of an impact do you think the cyber threat is for underwriters and risk partners at accountancy firms? Oh, I think it's a significant risk. Um, there is definitely some third party risk, um, perhaps not the same extent as other professions, lawyers, for example, are used to having large amounts of money. But having said that, accountants hold huge amounts of data uh, on clients, particularly if they're involved in payroll, etc. Um, so it is a, a significant risk to them. And as I say, you know, we've seen a number of ransomware attacks recently. 
and they can be very debilitating for a client. Um, and that's why it's important that they have uh, cyber insurance in place that covers first party losses and also provides extra protection in the sense that you get experts to help deal with the issue. Yeah. So that, you know, that's essentially essential, not only um, to, to ensure that the they've got a bespoke cyber policy for first party claims, but just also to be aware, this is a policy to be aware that the, the, the minimum terms professional identity poly, policy will cover third party claims as well. So on a slightly different note, now you and I, we've done lots of risk management seminars for firms of accountants over the years. And now I'm going to hold you to this. If, if there was one thing you think firms could do better, in order to avoid claims and improve their chances of a successful renewal? What do you think that would be? That's a very difficult question to answer. Um, if I was pushed, I'd say the paper trail is absolutely key. Um, making sure that you're issuing a letter of engagement, it's the cornerstone uh, of your relationship with the client, setting out what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. Um, you can also set out limitations of liability in that. And following up that paper trail, you know, with attendance notes, notes of meeting, etc., is is key to protecting your position. It can a reduce the risk of, of getting a claim in the first place, and b if you do uh, unfortunately get a claim, then it helps defend that claim. So that would be my key message: is make sure that your paper trail is in order. Thanks so much, Neil. I mean, just pulling all this together, this there's this been very much a micro discussion. But uh, so as far as the markets concerned, the fresh indemnity market's been pretty turbulent over the last few years. As far as accountants has been concerned, we haven't seen a, a wave of claims, but we have seen a, gr a growing hardening of premiums. Uh, and you, you, you're hopeful that that might sort of stabilise. In terms of notifications against accountants, um, we haven't seen uh, a huge amount during the pandemic, but there is a potential for uh, a, you know, a variety of latent claims as a result of um, sort of working from home issues, other related COVID issues which we're just not going to see for, for a little while. Uh, and of course, you've highlighted the, uh, the cyber threat and the importance of getting a bespoke um, cyber policy. Uh, and some really interesting pointers on, on risk management, the key one there being getting the paper trail right. So thanks so much for taking time to speak to me today. Uh, Neil, it's been, it's been great to talk to you. Thank you very much and goodbye.